Hello, I am Dr. Lee's AI speaking assistant in practical pain management. It is a modified version of the video about the cadaver workshop. Previously I posted the introduction video about the cadaver workshop. Therefore, of course, it had the scene of cadaver images, but Google decided my video was unsuitable for viewers under 18 and made it a challenge to watch. However, if you are interested in the original version, you can watch it after passing your age verification. Let me introduce the last workshop of the Korea University's International Fellowship Training in Interventional Pain Medicine. It is a cadaver dissection workshop. You will learn practical anatomy through the cadaver dissection and correlate it with your previously acquired ultrasound sectional anatomy. If you do not experience the dissection workshop, please try it at any anatomic lab close to you, and it will give you an enormous opportunity to learn practical anatomy. The anatomic materials are not embalmed but very fresh. So we could provide detailed, vivid practical anatomy to the fellows in the last session of the fellowship training course. The venue is the Practical Anatomy Center at Korea University Annam Hospital. It is currently located on the fifth floor of the main building. It has an anatomy lab, a virtual dissection simulation lab, a cadaver surgery room, and an operating room with a surgical microscope. The object of the cadaver dissection is learning practical anatomy. Your knowledge of anatomy is in the cyber world. I want you to match your knowledge with the real world. Find and satisfy your intellectual curiosity. There are rules and guidelines to participate in the dissection. No photos or videos are allowed. It would be best if you respected the bodies. Your group will be split into four groups, and each group will rotate four parts in each dissection step. The process will be divided into two steps, the dissection period and the observation period. During the dissection period, you can join any part of the dissection where you are interested. During the observation period, you must listen to the instructor and observe the dissected anatomic structures. I will explain the sequence of the dissection. Intermittently we will stop dissection and provide you with enough observation time at each step. The first step is the incision of the skin. The skin and subcutaneous tissue will be mobilized and retracted to expose the deep fascia and the superficial muscles. The second step is the incision and mobilization with retraction of the superficial muscle group. In this step, you will watch crucial peripheral nerves running in the interfascial layers, which is important in pain management. The third step is to remove the deep muscle and exposure the joint capsule. The fourth step is to expose the joint. The fifth step is to restore the muscles, fascias, and skin with suture materials. Four parts of the body will be dissected separately by four different instructors simultaneously. There are two corpses, one body is supine, and the other is prone. In the table of supine, the first instructor starts from the anterior neck to the palm. The second team will work from the inguinal region to the anterior ankle in the opposite leg. In the table of prone, the third team starts from the posterior neck, interscapula, and posterior upper extremities. The fourth team will dissect from the gluteal to the plantar of the foot in the opposite lower extremity. You can observe the dissection process or join the team during the dissection period. I will show you an example and extend it to the whole body. It is the case of the lateral hip, and I will let you know when to freeze to observe the objects. The skin and subcutaneous tissue have been mobilized and retracted to expose the iliotibial tract and the two attached muscles. You will observe the tissues in the first rotation round in each part. Please note the deep fascia, subcutaneous nerve tissues, and penetrating vessels. In the first round, you will tour different areas of the body. You will observe the posterior part of the SEM, trapezius muscle, and greater occipital nerves in the posterior neck. The medial scapular region has flat, superficial layers of the trapezius and latissimus dorsi. The deltoid, infraspinatus, triceps, and axillary nerve branches are in the posterior shoulder. The deep thoracolumbar fascia is the strongest in the body. It may be difficult to watch the small subcutaneous nerves, such as superior and middle clunial nerves. In the knee, you must observe the patella, infrapatellar ligament, retinaculum, distal insertional area of the iliotibial tract, biceps femoris tendon, medial collateral ligament, 
and attachment of pes ulcerinus. In the medial tibia, you can watch the pes ulcerinus, greater saphenous vein, and saphenous nerve. The left image is the medial aspect of the distal tibia and ankle. Please note the deep fascia, subcutaneous nerve tissues, and penetrating vessels in the popliteal fossa and calf in the right image. Don't miss the fascia lata and lateral femoral cutaneous nerve in the inguinal region. In the posterior thigh, the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve and inferior clunial nerves are the structures you must notice. Let's keep going. The iliotibial tract has been incised between the gluteus maximus and tensor fasciae latae muscles. The gluteus maximus muscle is covered by a relatively thin fascia posteriorly. Its tenderness layer joins with the iliotibial tract just behind the greater trochanter. The tensor fasciae latae muscle contributes anteriorly to the iliotibial tract. The prominent white tenderness expansion of the vastus lateralis muscle is placed below the gluteus medius. A retractor is placed on the free anterior border of the gluteus medius muscle. Several large branches of the lateral circumflex femoral artery pass through the junction of the muscle with the iliotibial tract to supply the skin in the anterior part. The trochanteric bursa of the gluteus maximus muscle is placed in the posterior region between the greater trochanter and the partially retracted portion of the iliotibial tract. The arrows indicate the cut dissected muscle of the anterior part of the gluteus medius and gluteus minimus. The insertion of the gluteus medius muscle covers the greater trochanter like a cap tipped toward the lateral side. It extends far down the greater trochanter's front and lateral facets. The piriformis tendon attaches to the upper facet of the greater trochanter, so the area on the anterior and superior surface of the greater trochanter is bounded by the insertions of the gluteus medius, minimus muscles, and the piriformis tendon. Please freeze, and go to the second round. Then, the dissection process will be finished, and we will allow you to observe the structures at the second layer. In the second round, you will observe the splenius capitus, splenius cervicis, levator scapula, rhomboid minor, major, and semispinalis capitus muscle in the posterior neck region. If you remove the SCM muscle at the first round, you will find multiple muscle layers such as omohyoid, scalene anterior, levator scapular muscle, and interscalene brachial plexus, the gluteus medius, piriformis, obturator internus, gemuli, obturator externus, quadratus femoris are muscles you can observe in deep gluteal region. Please find and research the sciatic nerve, posterior femoral cutaneous nerve, and proximal portion of the pudendal nerve. These structures are a crucial element to study to learn about deep gluteal syndrome. If you removed the hamstring muscle in the first round, you could observe the hamstring tendon and posterior portion of the sciatic nerve. The common perineal and proximal portions of the tibial nerve can be observed in the first and second rounds. The femoral nerve can be observed in the first round, but you can observe the branches during the second round, like an obturator nerve. The adductor tubercle, distal femoral nerve, and saphenous nerves are the structures you should study in the medial distal thigh. I have wondered about the ultrasound echogenic triangular structure in the posterior fossa of the knee, called the posterior fat pad triangle. Please observe the structure and correlate it with the ultrasound image. You will observe the multiple muscle layers of the calf and the intervening posterior tibial artery and tibial nerve. Keep going. The gluteus minimus muscle has been removed and exposed to the joint capsule. The area on the free surface of the greater trochanter is bounded by the insertions of the gluteus medius and minimus muscles and bearing the insertion of the piriformis tendon. Stop, and let's go to the third round. All the dissection processes will be finished, and we will allow you to observe the structures at the deeper layers. In the third round, you will observe the spinalis muscle, the gross mass of the erector spinae muscle, the fine attachment of the iliocostalis thoracis muscle, perforating nerves, costovertebral joint and ligament, paravertebral space in the medial scapula and cervical region. You will learn more about deep pudendal nerve branches if you remove the sacrotuberous and sacrospinous ligaments. You will study the rotator cuff and biceps tendon in the shoulder. If you remove the gluteus medius and minimus, you can observe the hip joint capsule and ligaments. Let's go to the fourth round. In the fourth round, you will observe the meniscus, 
posterior cruciate ligament, and coracohumeral ligament. I described the coracohumeral ligament in my YouTube channel before. If you have an extraordinary interest in the anatomy of the special region, you are allowed to dissect during the dissection if you do not disturb the main dissection. You can study more about the inferior clunial and pudendal nerves in the perineal area. Learning starts when we are curious about anything, that curiosity drives us to understand more and know about things deeply and helps us to gain knowledge. Humans are very curious by nature. I have developed knowledge and ultrasound skills through curiosity and anatomic dissection study. Cadaver dissection and practical anatomic study are good ways to learn and build your knowledge and skills. Let's go for it and you won't regret it. Good luck and see you in the anatomic lab.